Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Highway to Hell. So now that this show is wrapping up, I figured we'll go through the last of my ghostwriter stuff, starting with Johnny Blaze. Now, Johnny Blaze is not a ghostwriter I'm a particularly big fan of. I do like what Ed Breeson was doing with him with the King of Hell stuff, and that's something that Nick Spencer and Donny Cates set up in the Damnation crossover, uh, which again, I own digitally, but I don't own in uh, you know, in physical form. And so there's a lot of Johnny Blaze stuff I own digitally, but that I don't own in physical form at all. So, uh, and that's just, you know, I buy them when they're on sale because I'm not a big Johnny Blaze fan, but there is, you know, I'll admit some great Johnny Blaze stuff out there. Uh, but I just, I think because I'm such a Danny fan, I immediately resist Johnny uh, Blaze stories. I like Johnny Blaze as a human character that assisted Dan in the 90s. I like him in that form. But as a ghostwriter, I never really did because, again, sometimes it's hard for me to get over the stupidity of making a deal with the devil. I mean, that's why I struggle reading Spider-Man comics now because I can't ever really forget the the you know brand new day or one more day thing. Like it's just it's so hard for me. So uh, so I don't know. It just seems seems like a a, um, a thing that makes sense to do is to not make a deal with the devil. Now, unless you're Al Simmons, where you're already in hell and you're trying to get back to see your wife or something like you know that makes a little bit more sense to me because like I said, they play up on how stupid that is and how how Al played right into the hand of some bigger master plan that he doesn't even want to be a part of. So because that's part of the story, that's why it works for me. With Johnny, they they rarely touch on how stupid it was that he made that deal. Uh, he's just like, cool, Johnny Blaze, you know, and he's not that he doesn't have his problems or his flaws, but it's just, you know, they, they don't touch on that kind of angle of it very often. So um, they did in the second movie a little bit, which I, I kind of like. That's what I like about the second movie. Um, so anyway, yeah, so the original Ghost Rider. These came out around the time of the Danny Ketch stuff in the 90s. Once that book took off, you know, Marvel was like, hey, we got to reprint some old stuff so that people know who Johnny Blaze is because we're going to bring him in as a human character and we kind of want people to know more about him. Plus, this is a good way to, to make some money off of those old comics, you know, by reprinting them. So Marvel did a lot of this in the 90s where they, you know, they did like, uh, you know, X-Men classics and um, I think uh, Untold Tales of Spider-Man was a book they did in the mid-90s. But there were just some, those weren't reprints, obviously, those were new stories, but they did some reprinting of stuff in the 90s and it was always, to me, cool because then I got to grow up reading things that came out in the 70s. So that's why I have this, a stronger palette of uh, comic books from the 70s, 80s, and 90s because I kind of grew up in the 80s and then got really into comics in the 90s big time, but they were reprinting older stuff, so I also read older things. So that's why when I go, oh, I love that when I was a kid, and someone might go, well, that came out in 1974, and I'm like, well, I, that's when I read it, when I was a kid, because they reprinted it. <laughs> so I, that's why it's, I love that, you know, and I like that Marvel and DC are kind of doing that now with key issues, they're reprinting stuff, and I think that's a good thing, because it kind of, you know, widens your palette of, of storytelling, um, you know, as you get into comic books. So I don't have this entire series. I wish I did. I'm still hunting some of them down because as I've been rereading them, it's like, hey, these are actually really fun stuff. But these are just the ones I had from when I was a kid. And now that I completed the Danny Ketch run, I'm going to go back and try to complete some of this. So I have the original Ghost Rider number one. I think this is a reprinting of his first appearance in Marvel Spotlight number five. And that's pretty much what we're getting is, is Marvel Spotlight reprints. I think one Marvel team up reprint and then the the first like... 10 issues of Ghost Rider or something like that. So this is Marvel Spotlight number five, retelling of it or reprinting of it. And I think this is Marvel number six with uh, Hellstorm uh, down here, Hellstrom, uh, Damien Hellstrom. Uh, so yeah, Javier Sataras did a lot of these covers, which are fantastic. Then there's, you know, some Andy Kubert stuff. Um, so this is, I think, Marvel Spotlight number seven. And then I think we get into like uh, Ghost Rider number one, and we start, they start reprinting those issues. So we have uh, Ghost Rider, original Ghost Rider number four. So remember, like I'm saying, this is original Ghost Rider number four, but it's a reprint of an old comic. This is actually a cover by Joe Quesada. Uh, there you go. Speaking of one more day, <laughs> Spider-Man. Um, and then Spider-Man's there, 30th anniversary. This came out in 1982. Um, so yeah, again, we're getting into the reprints of uh, Marvel Spotlights and Ghost Rider, early Ghost Rider issues. So that's what all these are. They just put new covers on them, which look great. So they got mo like more modern artists to kind of, you know, do these. So we got Season of the Witch Woman. Um, I think this is a Ghost Rider issue. I think maybe three or four. I can't remember. Um, oh, this is Ghost Rider. So these are all Marvel Spotlights. So I think most of these are Marvel Spotlights here. Um, 
And this is Ghost, a repr reprinting of Ghost Rider number one. So remember, Ghost Rider, his first appearance was not in, or Johnny Blaze was not in a Ghost Rider comic. It was in Marvel Spotlight number five. Uh, but this is reprinting Ghost Rider number one. So he, he lasted in Marvel Spotlight for a little while, became kind of a hit. So they gave him his own series again, because I think there was a, a Ghost Rider before Johnny, who's like a cowboy Ghost Rider. Um, I don't think he had a flaming head, though. So then I have issue number nine, and this is where I start getting holes in my series. So I love this cover, by the way. Uh, issues 10 and 11 I am missing. Uh, those are, again, reprints of uh, Ghost Rider comics. So I'm missing numbers 10 and 11. I have 12 here and 13. Um, but I think I'm missing, yeah, 14 and 15 I'm missing. So here's issue 16. Um, and then I have 17. And then I believe I'm missing issues 18 and 19. So I'm only missing like six or seven books. You know, like I'm not missing a lot. Issue 18, though, is a Marvel team-up reprint where it's the Ghost Rider meeting the Hulk. Um, so, and it's like their first meeting together, I think, Johnny Blaze and the Hulk. So that's a cool one. And then this is the final issue, Bone Crushing Finale. Um, and it's like, I think it's Ghost Rider issue 13, maybe, or 12. I think they skipped an issue. I don't know why they skipped issue 10, but I think issue 10, they didn't reprint. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because they wanted to end on a issue 20. I have no idea, but, uh, but they skipped Ghost Rider number 10 for whatever reason. I can't remember what happens in issue number 10. So, um, so anyway, so yeah. So then these are a couple Ghost Riders from the original run that I just found in like dollar bins at one point um, at Golden Apple. So there's issue 38, just a kind of kind of a cool cover. So I wanted to get it. His bike is on fire so, so hardcore that it heated up. I thought that was a, a neat visual. Same with this one. They did that here with uh, the Knight Rider, uh, Ghost Rider's Strangest Adventure Ever, issue 50. And then what Marvel did was they reprinted these. These actually came out first. These came out before the uh, original Ghost Rider series, but they take place after. So what this is, is the Ghost Rider, the original Ghost Rider rides again. It was seven issues, and basically they reprint the last 14 issues of the Ghost, the Ghost Rider series, the original Johnny Blaze one. So this has Ghost Rider issues 68 and 69 in it, I believe. So it's, uh, and, and issue 68 is when they retold uh, Johnny Blaze's origin, you know, because they did it obviously in Marvel Spotlight 5, they kind of told an origin, and then Ghost Rider number one, they kind of, you know, touched on it again and, you know, uh, streamlined a little bit of it. But this, I think, is more of the, the more common knowledge origin of Johnny Blaze, dealing with Mephisto and the deal with the devil and all that stuff. So so this has that in it, and it's, you know, it's, it's a pretty good issue, and so it has issue 68 and 69, and this has issue 70 and 71 of Ghost Rider, um, and then 72 and 73 are in this one. Uh, then you have 74 and 75. And then Ghost Rider 76 and 77, where it's Johnny Blaze battling the Ghost Rider um, in Hell, which is cool. We got Mephisto there. Uh, 78 and 79. And then issues 80 and 81, which are the final two issues of Ghost Rider. It was canceled at 81. Um, the original series and then it disappeared for years and then obviously Danny Ketch was invented I think Johnny popped up a couple times here and there but then Danny came in and you know it, then that's when for me you know Ghost Rider that's what I grew up with it was Ghost Rider number one issue number one of Ghost Rider with Danny Ketch that was my first uh, exposure to the character of Ghost Rider so yeah I'm a big Danny fan but this is where the original run ended which is 80 and 81 and you know what I love Johnny Blaze but he has not had a series that has lasted more issues than Danny Ketch. If you add up all of his runs every time they renumber it, he out you know he outlives Danny Ketch for sure. But he hasn't had a single book that lasted more than ninety three issues. Um, so then there's this series here, which uh, is written by Mark Andreco, who is someone I met and became friends with out in California when I lived there, and he's a very talented writer. I've been a fan of his for years. Actually, this was my first exposure to him. Um, this came out in 1998, and this is called The Supernaturals, and this is an alternate universe where um, Brother Voodoo, this is also my first exposure to Brother Voodoo, who I am a huge fan of as well, as far as like C-list characters go. I really like the character Jericho Drum. Um, this story has him, and I think Satana, and Black Cat, and Werewolf by Night, and Grey Gargoyle, and Ghost Rider. Um, but it's Johnny Blaze Ghost Rider, and it's from a different dimension. So I think the whole point of this was that the they didn't know where the Danny Ketch stuff was going to end, and so they were like, "All right, well, we you know we're going to use Johnny Blaze in here." And I think for Mark Andreco, he just wanted to write the original 
you know, Ghost Rider to him, you know, like the one he knew growing up. So, uh, so he did an alternate universe take. So these characters exist in another universe and they battle Jack-O-Lantern. But in this universe, the Jack-O-Lantern is Jericho Drum's brother, uh, brother Voodoo's actual brother. Um, so yeah, it's a really cool story. And the neat thing about this is each issue comes with a Halloween mask, like a cardboard Halloween mask that you can cut out. So one of these has a Ghost Rider mask in it. And then another one has like a Brother Voodoo mask in it. And I think there's a gray gargoyle mask, maybe. Um, there's a couple masks. I think there's like five or six masks total. Yeah, five total. So I have four of the masks because I have one of each issue. And they're all different, luckily for me. They're all different masks. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I love this series. Actually, I just made a joke the other day on Twitter about this where I said, uh, you know, they should bring back Ghost Rider, because that was a book that got is or someone was saying, oh, they should put Ghost Rider, uh, Robbie Ray as Ghost Rider, uh, Doctor Strange and Blade on a team together. And I said, yeah. And, you, and someone said you should add. Oh, it was Allie, our friend from Let's Talk Scream. She said, oh, you should add Scream to the book because it's Andy Benton. And she has the hell mark. And I said, oh, that'd be cool. So if you add, you know, add a Scream or Andy, you could bring back the book, The Supernaturals, and you could have it be about those four characters, which would be super cool. So in this one, they fight like Dracula and, you know, Frankenstein and stuff. And uh, then they have a big battle against the Jack-O-Lantern here. Um, so, uh, yeah, really, really cool. I like this book a lot. And uh, it, it's, you know, it, was, it introduced me to not only Mark and Draco, but Ivan Reyes, who, you know, um, you know, 10 years later or whatever, would go on to become a, a major artist over at DC, uh, starting with the, the Jeff Johns Green Lantern stuff. So, yeah, so then more Johnny Blaze stuff here. This talks a little bit about the movie um, and then also the return of him in the comics. Like they did, I think Devin Grayson did a Marvel Knights series and I'll put a picture of that up on screen if I have one. Um, and then after that miniseries ended, Garth Ennis came in and did a Ghost Rider miniseries uh, with Clayton Crane and then soon after they did that miniseries, I think they did a prequel series series called Trial of Tears. Um, and all of these came out around the time of the movie and being in development and coming out as well. So again, Marvel just being one, wanting to sync up with the movies, they were like, hey, let's get uh, Johnny Blaze back as Ghost Rider. So that's what they do. So this here is neat. It's just a Marvel Spotlight book. It talks a little bit about the movie, has uh, you know little interviews inside with uh, Mark Stephen Johnson, who was the kind of this go-to guy for like a couple years at, you know, where Hollywood was like, Hey, let's get, or it wasn't even just Hollywood is who 20th century Fox, I think had the rights to ghost Rider and daredevil. So they were like, let's get Mark Steven Johnson, who seems like a big fan to write and direct both movies. So we did daredevil, which was like, I don't know. There's some good stuff in daredevil. I like Ben Affleck. I really love, um, you know, uh, bullseye in that movie. Uh, Colin Farrell does such a great job. And, uh, uh, Michael Clark Duncan does a good job as Kingpin. So I thought it was a pretty well cast movie. Um, but for the most part, but it was just kind of a messy movie if structurally, but I thought I had some good moments in it. Uh, but anyway, so I guess they liked his work on daredevil, even though that movie didn't do that well. And they let him do ghost Rider, which did, I think, about the same as Daredevil did. Like, you know, the look, and they took the look of Johnny Blaze, or took a look of uh, Danny Ketch and gave it to Johnny Blaze. I'm like, come on, Johnny Blaze doesn't look like that. He wears like blue and, you know, it's like Dan Ketch has like leather and he's got this cool motorcycle. And so they they aped, you know, uh, Danny Ketch's look and gave it to Johnny Blaze. I'm like, you took, you guys, like, you guys are so lazy. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I'm not a big fan of the first movie, to be honest with you. There's some, it has a few moments in it that I enjoy. But I'm not a big fan. The second movie I like a little bit more because I love the opening where, where he's like narrating and he goes, yeah, I'm that idiot that made a deal with the devil. And right there, I'm like, all right, good. He acknowledges that it was stupid, and uh, which is something they don't really do in the first movie. And so in the second movie, they play into that. And it's more campy in the second movie. And I, I like the, the camp of it. So anyway, this is a cool little run. And they're kind of setting up uh, the Daniel Way book, which is coming out around this time. Uh, which is, you know, a, an ongoing Ghost Rider book, which we'll, I'll show here in a minute. And that is where that leads to the path of Danny Ketch coming back. So that's pretty cool. Then obviously we have this Marvel Tales, which we already did a, a video on. This has a um, the Ghost Rider number 68 reprinted in it. So it's the retelling of Ghost Rider, which we just talked about a minute ago. And then there's also a Marvel team up in here. I think issue 15 with Spider-Man. And there's a what if in here. What if Johnny Blaze was separated from the Ghost Rider? So we, we did a review on this. So you can go check that out. Um, I also wanted to get this. This is a, uh, a Lego comic book. This came with my Ghost Rider set. So you can see Ghost Rider on the cover there. And he is in the book because there is an actual Lego Ghost Rider 
which I think we talked about on the show here as well. So, uh, so yeah, you know, I, I had to have this as part of the Danny Ketch collection, uh, cause, or, or the Johnny Blaze collection. Cause I don't actually know which, because Ghost Rider in the uh, in the Lego form, I don't think he ever turns into a human, so I don't know if it's Johnny or Danny. <laughs> so I just got it just in case. I put it with the Johnny Blaze collection because I'm just gonna assume that it's gonna be Johnny. Marvel seems to always default back to Johnny, so that's why it's in there. Um, this was cool. This was a nice little mini series that came out uh, that had good artwork in it, and I thought the story was decent. It was pretty neat. Um, again, I think it's uh, Satana. I can't remember. Is that her name? Like, is it Satana? I think I'm blanking. I think I might have got it wrong. Let's uh, let's go back to Supernaturals here for a second, um, and let's let's open up one of these books. I'll show you one of the masks too, so this will this will help out with that as well. Um, so yeah, we have yeah, it's Satana. So Satana. So that has all the characters in it right there, um, and it looks like uh, Brian Polito helped with. Some of the storytelling and Mark Andreco was the writer. Ivan Reyes was the pencil artist and Jim Ballant did some of the cover stuff. So yeah, it starts off with these uh, Jericho and his brother, um, you know, as kids. And that's how, you know, and it gets into their story and all the heroes get sucked away. All the X-Men, all the Spider-Man, all the heroes. And it's up to the super, the team of the supernaturals to uh, save the world. And there's the mask. You can Pull it out if you want, uh, although there's staples in it, so you'll kind of ruin the book a little bit. I thought this was silly, the way they did this. <laughs> but you have the two holes in it, so you can put a string on and you can make it a mask. So anyway, it's still cool. I, I kept the masks in there because I don't want to destroy the comic books. But look at this artwork. Ivan Reyes is, is the man, even back then. Uh, then he went on to do Green Lantern, and he drew like 100 characters on one page at one point. It's crazy. Um, so then, boom, check out that jack-o'-lantern. I actually like that design so much with the purple jacket and the black pants and the kind of the pirate boots. That's so cool looking. It's so cool. Um, so for you jack-o'-lantern fans. And there was an ad there for one of my favorite 90s books, The Slingers, which, you know, I might make a collection video. I, I might. I have some collections that are silly that I think would be fun to make videos for. So we might do that at, coming up at some point. So anyway, so it is Satana. Um, so this book has Blade and um, Damien, Hellstrom, Ghost Rider. Uh, so this was just a five issue mini series that I just thought was cool. It's got the Hellmark there, or version of it. Um, and it was a five issue series. So I was like, yeah, I gotta have this. There's a Phoenix variant. I was like, oh, I don't, you know, the, the idea of a Ghost Rider being the Phoenix, I mean, talk about OP. But it made for a cool image. So I was like, all right, I'm going to get that variant cover. Uh, then this is issue four. And then we have issue five here. Which actually I find this to be kind of a boring cover. It's got great, I mean, it's a good art. A good art on there. But I would have rather seen Ghost Rider and an angel side by side. This crosshair design thing is kind of silly to me. Um, I don't really like that. Um, and then we have the issue that Johnny Blaze, where he be he becomes the king of hell. So this is part of the Damnation storyline. And I kept the single issue uh, Sabella wrote it. Uh, Phil Noto did the artwork, and this is kind of the key issue where he is, you know, left in hell, and he ends up becoming the king of hell. So I wanted to keep that single issue. And like I said, there's other Ghost Rider stuff that came out uh, around this time. One of them being the Daniel Way run. So I have the trade paperback here, and this, uh, you know, and you know me, I I, I kind of like Daniel Way stuff. He did a Wolverine book called Origins, I think, and that was pretty good. He brought in the character of Deken. Um, I thought that was pretty good. I liked his Venom run for the most part. I thought it ended poorly, but I kind of liked the buildup of his Venom run. The uh, It was called Marvel Tsunami Venom, um, but that was the one that introduced Patricia uh, Robertson, the character uh, who is, eventually became Scream and kind of got mixed in with Andy and that Scream book and stuff. But I like Patricia. She's cool. Um, and then he went on to do Thunderbolts, and then he did Ghost Rider here. So this has, he brought back Mark Texieri and Javier Soteres, and uh, Corbin is one of the other artists in this book. There's a couple artists in this book. Um, but this has issues 1 through 19. Ghost Rider goes to war with Lucifer. So this goes past the Mephisto stuff and goes into another realm of hell and deals with uh, actual Lucifer. So it's pretty neat. Uh, it's, an, it's a neat run. And when I saw that they put them all in one book together, I was like, yeah, I have to have this. And like, look at some of the artwork. It's so good. Javier and Mark Texieri. Like, these are, they're classic Ghost Rider artists, man. They, they always... Uh, you know, I hope they always are able to do for as long as they can do stuff with uh, with this, these characters. And actually, you just saw there Jack o Lantern, or uh, is it, or is it Scarecrow? I think it's Jack o Lantern. Um, I think he appears a couple times in here. Um, but yeah, cool stuff. Oh, and there's here's the World War Hulk 
<laughs> issues. Uh, these are cool, actually. I think these are two of the best issues of World War Hulk. I mean, uh, Planet Hulk. Oh, yeah, it's World, World War Hulk. Yeah, because Planet Hulk is great, but World War Hulk is when Hulk comes back down to Earth and he's causing trouble, obviously. He's wanting to get back at the heroes who sent him into outer space. So when Ghost Rider finally gets a hold of Hulk, you know, they, the two of them go at it. You're like, who's going to win? Like somehow they got to pick a winner. I hate when they, you know, fight to a stalemate and nothing happens. So what happens here is, uh, you know, Hulk actually beats the crud out of Ghost Rider. But as you'll see, that doesn't matter because Ghost Rider can still come back. And him and he goes Super Saiyan almost. Uh, and him and Hulk go face to face. And just when he's about to face and defeat the Hulk or fight Hulk back, he looks right in his eyes. He does the pendant stare. Look, he's staring right at him. And then he look, they exchange a look, and then he drives away. And then someone even says, and then he drives through the tank that's trying to stop him, and he disappears. And Reed Richards and Doctor Strange are like, and everyone, they're like, how, you know, why did this happen? Like, why did he drive away? And it was because the, you know, the Ghost Rider looked into Hulk's eyes and saw that he wasn't the transgressor. He wasn't the sinner. Uh, it was the heroes who had you know, actually slung Hulk into space. Hulk was innocent. And he saw the world that Hulk was on, Planet Hulk, get wiped out and what that meant to Hulk and why he came back to get his revenge. And because he's a spirit of vengeance, he's like, well, I'm not going to stand in the way of vengeance. So he drove away. And I was like, that's so awesome. Like, because obviously these two guys are going to fight to a stance. Like they're, I don't know if one could beat the other with Hulk and, and Ghost Rider. I don't know, to be honest with you. I guess it depends on the circumstance, but I, I think they would just fight to a standstill. And that was a, such a clever way to end that fight. So yeah, I like this run. It's really good. And that leads into this run, uh, which I only have the, vo the first volume of. The second volume, I think, finally came out a couple months ago. I just haven't been able to buy it yet. But this is The War for Heaven. Um, so right where this book ended, issue 19, this book picks up. Issue 20, and Jason Aaron took over. And uh, Bosky, Hout, uh, Brown, Villa Rubia, all of these uh, very talented people came in and did the artwork on it. And this is the run that brings back Danny Ketch. Uh, so we get, you know, a lot of Johnny Blaze stuff here. Um, and then the, the Cowboy Rider. And yeah, you get all kind of crazy stuff. Deacon comes back. The Orb is in this one. Um, and then there's stories of Ghost Riders, I think, through the centuries. And then here, there you get Danny as the Blue Ghost Rider. And it's pretty much a Danny versus Johnny book from here on out for the most part. Um, you get Ghost Riders from other eras and other places, which is pretty neat. Um, and then, yeah, so Ghost Rider is hellbent and heavenbound as Jason Aaron blazes a new trail for the Spirit of Vengeance. And this has issues 20 through 32 in it and annuals 1 and 2. And then I think Volume 2 has the final, like, I don't know, four issues of Ghost Rider that came after issue 32. And then also a miniseries called The War for Heaven. And then uh, I think the Danny Ketch series called Addict, which again, I own a lot of the stuff in digital, but I do want the trade. So at some point I'm going to buy the trade so I can have, you know, this whole run all together. And then that's like, that's like the complete story. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of cool Johnny Blaze stuff out there. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, I'm not a you know, big fan of a ton of it. Like Trail of Tears, like the Clayton Crane stuff is neat to look at. Um, Garth Ennis is a good writer, but I just, I remember just being resistant because it was Johnny Blaze. I'm like, I can't, I can't get a, get behind this, man. I need Danny Ketch back. And I was so glad that Jason Aaron eventually did bring him back. And then that obviously led to him having his own series again with Johnny Blaze. And like I said, I thought Ed Breeson and them did a great job with the balance of, all right, Johnny has this role as King of Hell and Danny has this role you know, to, you know, I don't know, find his purpose. Um, and obviously that led him to Limbo, which he was tricked to do. So I guess I was kind of hoping that after all the stuff Ed Breeson was putting Danny through, I was kind of hoping Danny would get a proper ending and goodbye. Like I would love nothing more for Danny to finish his story and then, and you know, and, and, and as a ghostwriter or spirit of corruption or whatever, save Johnny and then have Johnny officially have the title again. Um, that's fine with me. Or Robbie Reyes or whoever. Like, I don't mind the torch being passed. 
figuratively, obviously. Um, I don't mind that. I just want Danny to have a happy ending. At this point now, it's like the Supernatural Brothers. I really hope that show ends with them <laughs> with a happy ending because they've just been through enough. And I know sometimes you get that feeling as a writer where you're like, they don't deserve a happy ending. You know, it, it's not in keeping with the character and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, but that's sometimes what makes it so rewarding is that they get, they hit the light at the end of the tunnel. So if Danny loses the spirit of corruption powers and he is not a ghostwriter anymore, but he gets to be with someone he loves, you know, like if they set up a new love interest for him, like obviously he can't be with Stacy, although he still loves her, obviously. Um, it would be neat to see him settle and, and be okay. I'm okay with that being his ending. If he just is like, hey, we're never going to write a Danny Ketch story again. I'm okay with that concept as long as he gets a proper goodbye. And I don't want him to die either. I don't want him to die and go to heaven because that's just going to make him, you know, capable of becoming some kind of weapon again later on to use against Johnny. So I don't, I don't really, I, I would be okay with his story ending. Uh, but Johnny, it seems like he is forever going to be the Ghost Rider no matter what. And him as the King of Hell right now, I think is actually interesting. It's an interesting thing to do with the character, especially since it's a character I've never really had a ton of interest in before. And I think that's a cool full, full circle way for him since he made a deal with the devil. Now he is the devil who can make deals with others. I think that's kind of poetic and kind of neat. So it's a shame we'll never get to see the end of that, but never say never. Hopefully one day we will. Hopefully Breeson will come back and those writers will come back and they'll get to conclude the story of Johnny Blaze in Hell as the King. So let me know what you guys think of this collection. You know, I know I'm missing some from the original Ghost Rider, but that's pretty much all my Johnny Blaze stuff. In the next episode, we're going to go through some miscellaneous stuff. We'll go through uh, Robbie Reyes. We'll have like the Cosmic Ghost Rider stuff. And then, you know, um, and then we'll have, uh, we'll talk a little bit about Alejandra. And uh, it's going to be a very small collection, but we'll still talk about the other characters to kind of lengthen it a little bit. So thank you guys for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in hell. Peace.